Okay, so you can check your answers now on heart and circulation. Homeostasis. This means keeping internal conditions constant. We had a brief uh, meeting with it in Unit 1. I'm going to concentrate for the minute on the removal of waste and water control. Now the two main waste products that have to be removed from the blood, so we're not talking about products of digestion now, we're talking about removing waste from the blood, are carbon dioxide, and that's removed through the lungs, we breathe it out, and urea. Now urea is the product of broken down amino acids. We don't store amino acids or proteins, they're broken down, and they're broken down in the liver but removed from the blood by the kidneys. Now the way that the kidneys work is that the blood is first filtered and it's exactly like a filter, it's exactly like a sieve and most substances are initially removed from the blood but then on its journey through the kidney all the sugar is reabsorbed, all of it and it has to be all of it because sugar, glucose, is our precious respiratory substrate and our body is not in the business of excreting our respiratory substrate. So it's all reabsorbed. And you can see I've put RE in capital letters there. Uh, it's not really going to get you the mark if you just say the sugar is absorbed because it's been absorbed anyway in the small intestine. It has to be reabsorbed. Ions are reabsorbed as needed. Not all of them, but just the amount that we need. And water is reabsorbed as needed. Just the amount that we need. Now urea is not reabsorbed at all. That's a waste product. All of it is excreted in our urine. Any excess water and excess ions are also excreted in the urine. Now we'll excrete less water on a hot day because we've lost more water in sweat as part of our cooling down mechanism. Now if a person has kidney disease or kidney failure then this filtration process is not going to be working correctly and this filter or sieve that I mentioned may be damaged which means that you might end up having large molecules for example proteins or glucose present in the urine. Now, proteins shouldn't be leaving the blood in the first place and glucose shouldn't be excreted in the urine. So kidney disease will be treated either with a kidney transplant or by dialysis. Now, a diseased kidney can be replaced by a healthy kidney from a donor and kidney patients can actually survive perfectly well on one kidney. Now, having a transplant from another person means that rejection can occur, so we need to prevent rejection. Now, the transplanted kidney has to be tissue matched in the first place. It has to be of the right tissue type for the recipient, for the patient. And then they'll have to take drugs for the rest of their lives to suppress their immune response. And of course, this can have other implications because it makes you more susceptible to other diseases. Dialysis is the cleaning of the blood outside the body. This is where the patient goes to hospital and hooks themselves up to a dialysis machine for a few hours and it's done several times a week. Now the blood comes out of the person's body and it flows through a dialysis machine which basically is a set of semi-permeable membranes and these membranes are bathed in dialysis fluid which is concocted so that it's at the ideal concentration of useful substances but there are no waste substances present in the dialysis fluid. Now this means that waste substances pass by diffusion into the fluid and they're carried away but the useful substances in the blood reach their ideal concentration. So this is a representation of a dialysis machine. Now, if you look more closely at it, you can see that the blood plasma is flowing in one direction. I haven't shown red blood cells because they're not involved in this. The blood plasma is going from left to right. The dialysis fluid is flowing from right to left, so it's going in a countercurrent direction, which helps to maintain the concentration gradient. Proteins, the blue dots, 
are within the blood plasma and they're too big to pass through the holes in the semipermeable membrane so the blood proteins don't go anywhere. Ions will reach their ideal concentration. They may diffuse out or diffuse in depending on whether the blood plasma is rather high in ions or whether it's rather low in ions. Uh, glucose will be at the ideal concentration in the dialysis fluid which means that it will reach the ideal concentration in the blood plasma but urea is not present in the dialysis fluid at all so all the urea will pass out of the blood plasma into the dialysis fluid and will be carried away. Now you might be asked to evaluate kidney transplants and dialysis. So the advantages of transplants are if you've got a healthy working organ then there'll be no build-up of toxins which is what tends to happen if you're waiting to go on a dialysis machine. This prevents high blood pressure which may be associated with the build-up of toxins. You don't have to spend hours several times a week hooked up to a dialysis machine. You can eat a normal diet and there are no risks inherent in dialysis. If you're constantly having to have a needle in your arm then there may be a risk of blood clots or infection from that. The disadvantage of transplants is that there's a long wait. There are a lot of people on the transplant waiting list and of course the tissue match is a problem. You have to find a suitable donor with the correct tissue type. You also have to take some immunosuppressant drugs for the rest of your life to prevent rejection of the new organ and there is a risk inherent in the operation itself. Dialysis can be uh, better in certain circumstances. There's no wait for a donor and there's no problem finding a match. You don't need to take immunosuppressant drugs and there's no serious operation with all the attendant risks of having a serious operation under general anaesthetic. The disadvantage is that you have to go to hospital two or three times a week. You spend hours there each time. You have to be careful what you eat. They have to be careful about their protein intake so they don't generate too much urea which will build up in the blood. There's the risk of clots and infection from dialysis and there's this build-up of toxins in between dialyses. Okay, would you like to test yourself now on the kidney?